Hello again. So DC motors, they're all over the place. And when you think about it, just at your home, you've got like your drill or maybe your electric toothbrush. Um, they're everywhere. So um, let's talk about how they work. Hopefully give you a bit of a, just a kind of a basic understanding um, by using some really basic type of um, uh, objects with um, some magnets and everything. And then we'll kind of shift over to how those kind of look a little bit, in a little bit more realistic of, of a motor and, and see if this helps you understand. So subject is DC motors. All right, so basic structure of a DC motor is going to consist primarily of the stator. So let's go ahead and draw a picture of that. It's got, it's got two magnets, and um, one's going to be north, and one's going to be south. Okay, so that's the stator, and inside the stator is the rotor. And the rotor is a magnet as well. And it's going to have a north side and a south side. So let's just say for now, the north side is over here. And our south side is over here. And again, this is the rotor and the outside is the stator. Okay, so you can imagine if these um, are two north, this is the north magnet and the north end of this magnet is here. These ears are going to repel each other. So there's going to be sort of this repelling action that's going like this because those are kind of the closest here. And on this side, it's going to get um, some repelling also. This south and this south aren't going to get along very well. They're going to um, oppose each other and it's going to push and pull the magnet in this direction. So imagine this magnet is sort of locked in place here in the middle. And it's got to rotate. It's going to rotate clockwise in this direction based on these magnetic forces. So let's just say it sort of keeps rotating to its fullest extent. And you can imagine where it's probably going to stop. So let me draw that out over here. So as you can imagine, it's going to stop in, in, a, in a location like this because now there's going to be this sort of attraction force between this south and this north side of the magnet, and there's going to be this attraction force between this north on the left and this um, south side of the magnet here. And you can imagine it's just going to want to stay there. So that wouldn't be very exciting of a motor if um, all it did was do this sort of a 180 from here over here, and then it just stayed there, right? So we need another, another um, piece here. And let me go, go ahead and draw out that next piece, which is um, the key to how this operates. Okay, so as you recall, it went from here, it, we went rotated clockwise to this one, and now we want to go from here to here. And the key between going from here to here is we're going to flip the polarity of this magnet. So now instead of having the north on this side, we're going to switch that to the south immediately. And we're going to switch the polarity of this one to north. So you can imagine that if, as soon as it got right at the point, it got to this point, right at the right space and time where it gets to this point, we switch it to this polarity. Well, now this is going to repel over here. These are going to repel, and it's going to twist it again counterclockwise in this direction. And you can see that if we, if it's in this state, it, that's basically the same as we were up here. These are basically um, the same thing. It's kind of an equal sign, right? These are the same thing. And it's just going to keep rotating. If we can keep flipping it at that, every time it does a 180, then we, can, then we can keep making it rotate. And this is really the key. We'll call this key one. So let's just say a bunch of keys up here to how this, this operates. And number one is going to be flip polarity of rotor at precise time and location. Okay, so how are we going to do that? I mean, you can't just, if it's a, it's a magnet, if it's a, a standard magnet, like you can't just flip its polarity um, automatically, right? But um, you can do it with an electromagnet. So let's go ahead and, and sh um, see how that works. So electromagnets. So imagine we had an electromagnet that looked like this. So this is a wire that's wrapped around it in this direction. And let's just say we had a positive side of the terminal is here, the minus side of the terminal was over here. Now, if we ran current through in this direction, we would end up making an electromagnet with a south pole here 
and a north pole on this side. Um, so let's see how we could, we could um, flip the polarity on this. If say we got the same magnet here, and we got that same um, wire wrapped around it, um, but now we had switched it to minus over here and plus over here. If we did that, we're going to switch the polarity of the magnet, and we've got north here and south here. So this is what I would say is key number two for an electric motor is you got to flip the polarity at the right precise time and location. And the way that you do that by changing current direction in the electromagnet. Okay, so these are the two first keys that we have here. But then you got this, you got to do this, you got to flip the polarity. Yeah, we know how to do that, but we got to do it at the precise time and location. Um, so how do we do that? And that's the really tricky part of this. And um, that's where this, the ingenuity of the DC motor is, is pretty cool. So um, let's take a look. In order to show this, we're going to have to do a little bit more of a, of um, sort of a detailed, more, more realistic type of model uh, of a motor. So this is just kind of the basic framework. And we're going to kind of move now to a little bit more of a, um, a realistic type of DC motor. So here we have such a motor. The stator has the north pole on the left and the south pole on the right, um, like in our diagram over here. And now you can see our positive electric terminal is connected to the right side of our coil and wraps around until it comes out at the left side of the rotor, which is connected to the negative terminal. So just like in our earlier diagram, this creates a south pole on the right and a north pole on the left. Now, the north poles of the stator and the rotor are going to repel each other, just like in our diagram up here, causing the rotor to turn clockwise. And from here, we get to this next position. And it's still going to want to keep turning clockwise at this point, because those same forces are still in, in operation that are, that are pulling it clockwise. And finally, we get to this position. And it does, at this point, still want to keep turning clockwise. Um, but here's where the trickiness happens. Notice the electrical connection between um, the terminal called a brush and the metal ring called the commutator. This is, this is where the magic happens. Now, if the motor keeps going you can clockwise, you can see that the positive brush terminal, it's actually going to switch. And when that positive terminal switches to feeding the right side, the current through the wire will be reversed, and the right side will become the south pole, and the left side will become the north pole again. And we're back to exactly where we started, and it's going to keep rotating clockwise. Um, so you see, you don't actually need a complicated switch to get this perfect timing and precise lo location. Um, it's kind of just built into the electromagnet, so it just switches automatically um, as soon as it gets into that, into that position. So running this through a couple times, um, you can see how the motor is going to keep turning clockwise as the polarity of the magnet keeps switching every time that rotor does a 180 degree or half turn. So that sort of leads us to what I would say is key number three, which is to set up the brush, the brushes and commutator to switch current at correct location. And those are really the three keys to a DC motor. Um, so I hope that helps you just kind of appreciate the basics of how these work. But until next time, take care.